today on You Be the Judge. The percentage of children with autism has skyrocketed during the past 30 years. Some people blame vaccinations. Others say it only seems like autism has increased because we're more aware of it. But could it be that a common drug is playing a role in the increase of autism? Imagine that you are taking drug X. Then imagine that scientists have become curious about the effects of drug X on human health and behavior. They conduct extensive testing on lab animals and conclude that there seems to be a direct link between the drug and harmful conditions found in a specific segment of the animal population, for instance, pregnant rats. Next, imagine that you fit into that specific human population segment and are possibly susceptible to the highly increased risk of the negative effects seen in animals caused by drug X. Then imagine that there are known alternatives to drug X, such as exercise, that have been found to be beneficial and possibly even more beneficial than the drug. Finally, imagine that studies have shown that a placebo is just as effective as the drug X that you have been taking. How does all of this make you feel about drug X? Now let's take a look at a real-life scenario that goes on today. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, are often found in antidepressants. These antidepressants are believed to affect serotonin. Now, in a developing embryo, serotonin plays a critical role in the brain's development, and many believe that autism is characterized by changes in the serotonin system. Therefore, it seems reasonable that taking these antidepressants during pregnancy might affect a developing baby's brain formation. Regarding these antidepressants, Dr. Adam C. Uredo said, It really shouldn't come as that much of a surprise, given that numerous animal studies have shown that exposure during development leads to changes in the brain and changes in behavior, changes that often mimic autism. Authors of the mentioned animal studies warned that their findings of harmful effects should concern us when using these drugs on humans. Only two studies have been completed on the links between autism and antidepressants in humans. The first study, a smaller one published in 2011, found that children whose mothers took antidepressants are twice as likely to have autism. A study recently published in the British Medical Journal surveyed a much larger group, and it found that the use of antidepressants was associated with a risk of autism three times that of women not taking those drugs. The authors of these studies were cautious with their words as no one has conducted a randomized controlled trial, RCT. An RCT can most accurately assess causation. Now to conduct an RCT, pregnant women would be required to take antidepressants in order for researchers to evaluate the effects in their babies. However, ethical issues have discouraged studying the negative effects of antidepressants during pregnancy. It's fair to note that an RCT is not always necessary to presume that a problem exists. For example, no randomized controlled trial was conducted on cigarettes, yet nearly everyone acknowledges that they cause harm. Regarding pregnant women taking antidepressants, the latest study suggests that non-drug approaches such as psychotherapy or exercise may serve the mother just as well or perhaps even better than the antidepressant. Finally, after years of research, there is little evidence that suggests that the antidepressants are clinically more effective than a placebo. Do you think there is something to be concerned about here? Should doctors recommend other treatments instead of antidepressants for pregnant women suffering from depression? Please, share your thoughts in the comment section. 